Good morning and welcome to the worship of our Lord here at Westminster Presbyterian Church, the second Sunday of Easter. We are glad you are here this morning. In celebration of my birthday, Pastor Blake has gone on vacation, and so he will be returning tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, as always, if you have prayer concerns or prayer requests, you can put them in the comments of the Facebook page if you are joining us virtually, and if you are here in worship with us, we will have a space um, in our prayers of the people where you can voice those prayers aloud. Uh, today we are celebrating communion, so if you are at home worshiping with us, we invite you to pause now and go and get the elements that you will be needing. Let us worship God with the call to worship. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. You turn my wailing into dancing, you removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Thy humble dwell. 
None of us like to look foolish, but which is sillier? Chasing after a world and all its gaudy trinkets to flatter our souls, or to be a fool for Christ, imitating him in service to others, offering ourselves in love and joy to the world. Let us admit to God the foolish choices we make each and every day as we pray our prayer of confession. God of joy, We know that you have blessed us richly, yet so often we are down in the dumps over silly little disappointments. You have given us Jesus Christ and raised him from the dead and promised us eternal life, but we act like we don't know it. Forgive us, God. Keep us mindful that you always have the last laugh that your your promise promise is true joy joy in every every circumstance, circumstance, life forever. forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Do not be afraid. Receive the good news with great joy. God's promises are true. Christ is risen. Believe and be alive. 
As people loved, forgiven, and freed, let us call ourselves to deeper faithfulness with the words of the Apostle Paul. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your, spell, self, keep your spiritual fever serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Amen. <laughs> Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Now is our time for our message for the children of God. In ordinary times, we would have children running up these pews, and unfortunately, we cannot have that right now, but I do have a message, not just for those young in age, but for those young at heart and all of God's children. Today, our gospel lesson is the road to Emmaus, which is when Jesus appears to two travelers and they don't recognize him. They can't see who he is. And so I was thinking about when we can see something, but we can't fully understand what's going on. And it got me thinking about the game Clue. And if any of you have played the game Clue, you know that we put three cards in a little envelope that has the murderer, the murder weapon, and the room where it happened, right? And they're right there on the board. They're in that little envelope, but we can't see it. There's something blocking it. There's something that is blocking our view from it. But we have some clues. We have clues in our hands of what it's not, of who it's not. We can sometimes see our friends' hands and what's in their hands. And Jesus gave these clues to the travelers too. He told them of who Jesus was. He talked about the scriptures. They kind of had an idea of what was going on, but it wasn't until that final moment when Christ broke the bread in our story this morning that they truly saw who Jesus was. There was this aha moment where things made sense again. And so I think sometimes things don't always make sense in our lives and we can't always see what's going on, but there is a plan and God is guiding us and God is with us in those moments. So let us give thanks to God that God knows what's going on. Amen. Tell how the women came early that day And there at the tomb found the stone rolled away We sing of the angel who said do not fear Your Savior is risen and he is not here So we sing alleluia Jesus is risen Lift high your praises, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is the victor, sound forth the trumpet, alleluia. We celebrate Easter when Jesus arose. And won the great victory over his foes We think of the promise which Jesus did give That he who believes in me also shall live So we sing alleluia Jesus is risen Lift high your praises alleluia 
hallelujah, Christ is the victor, sound for the trumpet, hallelujah. So raise your glad voices, all Christians, and sing, and lift high your praises to Jesus your King. Alleluia, Jesus is risen, lift high your praises, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is the victor, sound forth the trumpet, Alleluia. Alleluia, Jesus is risen, lift high your praises, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is the victor, sound forth the trumpet, Alleluia. Lift high your praises, Alleluia. Lift high your praises, Alleluia. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. Got some extra papers up here this week. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Listen now for the word of God. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. They replied, The things of Jesus of Nazareth. They said, He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and they told us that they had seen visions of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb, and they found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish are you, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning with us, within us while we talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? Then they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. There's an ancient tradition that some churches have been revitalizing in recent years. And it's a tradition that goes back to the early church, and it's celebrated on this Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. It's called Holy Humor Sunday. It's a day that is based on the idea that God is the one who got the last laugh. The early church called it Bright Sunday, and some churches have made this a day in which people dress up in silly outfits, play pranks on one another, tell each other jokes. It's the April Fool's Day of the church. One Florida pastor stood up in the pulpit this Sunday, told his congregation that the sermon would be about sin, said, don't do it, and then sat back down. <laughs> don't worry, you're not getting that lucky. It's seen some resurgence in the last few year years, or at least I've noticed it more. And I think some of that comes from our longing to bring back some of our old traditions, reconnecting with our past. But it also has to do with another name that this Sunday in particular has earned. And that day is Low Sunday. Low Sunday refers to Sunday after Easter and Christmas and has to do with both low attendance in our pews and low energy. We've just finished these long seasons in the church and they end in these big celebrations and the next Sunday some people decide they need a break. This year we're lucky because we haven't been in church together, so it's good to see so many people in our pews. And to be fair, we do need breaks sometimes. We need to take breaks. Sundays after Easter and Christmas is also referred to as Intern Sunday or Associate Pastor Sunday. <laughs> it's the Sunday that solo pastors and heads of staff have put in so much time and energy, they are just ready for a break, and they are ready for someone else to take over. And I'm really glad that Pastor Blake got to celebrate Associate Pastor Sunday this year. <laughs> After Easter, I did take a six-hour nap, so I'm ready for this. <laughs> but Easter is not just one day in our church. We think of Easter as this big culminating event to the end of Lent, but Easter is not over in that one day. Holy Humor Sunday says, come back, please wait. The party isn't over. We're not done telling the story. This is a story you're going to want to hear. It's a story of joy and laughter. It's a story that takes weeks to tell. Easter is actually the start of a season, starting on Easter Sunday, going for 50 days until Pentecost. For 50 days, we celebrate the resurrected Christ living among us. And I think the way our lectionary set up the text this year really helps with that. I'm not sure if you noticed last Sunday, on Easter Sunday, we celebrated the risen Lord, but we didn't actually see the risen Lord. Luke doesn't tell a story about Christ reappearing at the tomb. Two men in dazzling white clothes break the news to the women. Mark's gospel says the first person Christ appears to is Mary Magdalene, but doesn't give a time or a place. In fact, the only gospel that has Christ appearing at the tomb is the, is the gospel of John. It's this week's scripture that we first see the risen Lord. Jesus appears to two travelers, and we only know the name of one of these travels, travelers, Cleopas. His companion is unnamed, and the text here gets a little confusing because it says there were two of them journeying. I've always thought this meant that there were two disciples journeying. We had just read the story of the disciples entering the empty tomb, and then we jump to these two, but there's no account of Cleopas being one of the 11 disciples. So what does it mean, these two? I can imagine that these were Jews who had traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover, and they had witnessed something. Perhaps they were close companions with the 11 remaining disciples. And I think this is a fitting text for our Holy Humor Sunday because it's almost as if Jesus is pulling a prank on these, two, on these two travelers. He's somehow hiding who he is. He's wearing a mask. The text says the two were kept from recognizing Jesus. 
The Greek literally says, their eyes were held not to know him. It wasn't that these two didn't know who Christ was or didn't know what he looked like, but their eyes kept them from knowing him. Jesus did something so that he would be undetectable at first. He wanted to walk among the people and hear what they were saying. I can imagine Jesus probably felt a little bit of disappointment to hear the conversation. Cleopas and the other disciple told, or the other traveler told Jesus how disappointed they were. They thought Jesus was the Messiah and instead he had been killed. This was the end of their story. They were returning home. Yeah, they had heard of this angel at the tomb, but no one had seen Christ. The disciples last week hadn't seen him. Only Peter even believed the women at all. Everyone else called it idle talk, gossip, foolish. But Jesus changes this real quick. Jesus calls these travelers foolish. Why couldn't they see what was preventing them from seeing all that Jesus had said would happen? How could they not see everything that Jesus had predicted had happened, and yet we think it's the end of the story? He lays it out for them, starting from Moses and going through the scriptures, but even in his explanation, they still can't see Jesus, or Jesus doesn't let them see him. It isn't until they sit down at table and Jesus blesses and breaks the bread that their eyes were open. And the next line is something I really love. They try to play it off. They said, oh, our hearts were burning the whole time he was talking. We, we kind of knew it was him, right? We, ha we had the clues. They wanted to be in on the joke, but they didn't even know the joke. The joke had to be explained to them, laid out in front of them, beginning to end. God was going to have the last laugh. The story was not over in death. It is clear as day, and no one got it. A few minutes ago, I talked about the game Clue. And while it's not a perfect analogy, it felt pretty close. The cards with the murder scene are right there on the board. But we are prevented from seeing them. We have clues of who it is, so we want to say that we were a part of it all along. But we don't know who's in there. And we can get it wrong and lose the game if we guess incorrectly. The good news is that when it comes to Jesus, there is no more losing of the game. Sure, we may not understand everything all the time, but that is the great mystery of our faith. We don't have all the answers. The disciples were given all the answers, told the end of the story, and they still couldn't get past the death of Jesus. They knew what was coming, and they couldn't see past this final point. In our foolishness, in our unknowing, in our doubt, the answer has always been the same. Christ lived for us. Christ died for us. Christ reigns in heaven for us. That's our punchline. And it's not a joke at the expense of someone else or making less of who God is. It's a joke that brings joy to the hearts of its hearers. It's a joke that causes God to delight when people, when we hear it. When we celebrate this Holy Humor Sunday, we don't do it to make light of the very serious nature of God, but to join in the joy with God. Christ is risen. Christ is still risen this week. Christ will be risen this whole Easter season. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We've now come to our time of the service where we offer up what we have to God, our time and our talents and our money. And although we're not passing the plate, we do have an offering plate in our narthex that you can give to. And if you are worshiping with us from home, there are many ways to give online through our app on our website or mailing in your check. Let us give our offering to God. one in three the highest praise is be hence evermore thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity love and adore let us pray God of new life, out of the abundance of our lives, we offer these gifts to you. Through your blessing and our willingness to share, may these offerings become a source of hope and love in this church family and in the community beyond us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The table of the bread is now to be made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have a little more. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for some time. You who have tried to follow Christ and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. God, your invitation to come and feast in your presence is but a taste of the love you extend to us every day. But your very nature, you are willing to seek us out, searching for ways to connect us and connect with us. You meet us in the most ordinary of places and you make them sacred. By your grace, we come to recognize the holiness that dwells in the world around us, in our neighbors, in our own internal depths. Therefore, we join our voices with your people on earth and all the company 
of the heavens singing praise to you, holy, holy, holy one. God of justice and love, heaven and earth are full of your wonder. Hosanna among us. Blessed are you and blessed is this eternal table. You welcome all who thirst for justice and hunger to grow in love. You ask us to extend the same welcome to all our neighbors. But God, since the beginning, we have struggled. And so in your love for us, you took on flesh in Jesus. Through his life, you pointed your presence to the margin. You revealed the sacredness in all life. You showed us how to live together, even among forces of destruction. Believing it could transform the world, Jesus proclaimed the good news. He called for the captives to be set free. He spoke of the lowly being lifted up. He talked of the redistribution of wealth and eradicating the causes of poverty. He committed to practicing love that knew no bounds, not even the bounds of death. On the night of his arrest, he shared a meal with his disciples broke and blessed the bread. In remembrance of all you have done to save us, O Christ, we proclaim the mystery of your faith, saying Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your spirits of these gifts, O God. Make these ordinary elements into sacred gifts of your presence. May they awaken us and anew us to the everlasting invitation into a life of resurrection. Aliven us in our pursuit of a world where needs are met, power is balanced, and the worth of every creature and creation is celebrated. It is now the time we pray for your world and your people. We pray for the family and friend of Mary Grosh who passed away on Thursday. She is from Arnold, Missouri, but worked in the NIU library. Prayers are also requested for all those involved in the trial of Derek Chauvin, who was accused of the death of George Floyd. Prayers that the truth will be told and the right outcome will occur. Lord, we lift up these names we have said, and we lift up the prayers in the silence of our hearts now. We know, O oh God, that you formed us together and you know us at our innermost being. There is no prayer in our heart that you do not hear. In our collecting longing for the taste of your kingdom on earth, we join together in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our evil, as we forgive our debtors. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night of his arrest, Jesus sat at table with friends. And after supper, he took the bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat of it, all of you, the bread of life. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he poured it and said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving grace of the risen Lord until he comes again. 
the cup of salvation. Let us pray. God of joy, your belly laugh echoes through the world. We have responded to your invitation to join in the banquet. Here we have eaten, we have drunk, we have tasted your goodness. May the joy we find in this meal together lift up our hearts. May we carry your laughter world around us. May we live out of that foolishness called love wherever we go. Amen. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven when I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they would not follow me. I dance for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people of the ones ashamed. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high and left me there on a cross to die. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. On the Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on They cut me down and I leap up high I am the life that will never, never die I'll live in you if you live in me, I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. You all in the dance, said Friends, God has the last laugh. God is the one who is telling this story, and we are called to follow along. Let us go out into the world today cheering the story. Go now with the peace of Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>